Hey everybody, hey Cardware here, and in this video we are going to go over how to install Armbian to the EMMC of your CM3588. One thing I do want to note, and there's this big warning here, CM3588 has community support for Armbian, so it may not work, and there's not really any sort of official support for it. You can probably post in the forums and someone may help, but it's just a lesser known board and it doesn't have as much support. I think they use like automated builds or something, but I used it for a little bit and I didn't have any major issues. One issue that I did see was that the five volt fan that I have, uh, my case uses a five volt fan and it just stays on constantly. When I install the friendly elect version of like Debian or uh, the bookworm or bullseye or noble for Ubuntu, the fan works correctly. I can tell that it turns on when any sort of like process that probably heats up the hardware, the fan will kick on. So it's set up correctly. If you figure out how to use or set the uh, five volt fan to work correctly, please leave a comment on the video because I'd love to add it to the wiki. So if you haven't used Armbian before, it's a pretty cool operating system. It's specifically like lightweight and built for ARM-based single board controllers, uh, Orange Pi, Banana Pi, things like that. Uh, some of those have more support than the CM3588. So if you have other boards, feel free to check out Armbian for those. Prerequisites for this guide, you should have a CM3588, of course, a micro SD card, and a micro SD card reader so that you can transfer those files, the Armbian file image to the micro SD card. And then of course you'll need the Armbian image, which we will get in this next section here. So if you click this link, there is a page here for, they call it Nano PC CM3588. And if you scroll down, I actually like, they put my, this is, I have another, uh, I called it a comet. It was for another project, but uh, it looks like they found my video and put it on the install page. Maybe they'll update it with the new one. Uh, it's basically the same, except for it's more generalized and not specific to the crypto project that I was using these for. Uh, but if you keep scrolling down, you're going to see there's some images here. So this install video should work pretty much the same for Ubuntu or Debian. The main differences between the two is Ubuntu has a desktop environment. Uh, Debian, I believe, might only have the CLI. I'm actually not sure. There might be a... Uh, well, it says only essential packages and system D. So mm, I'm judging by the size. I'm going to say this probably doesn't have a desktop environment. And then they do have like a Open Media Vault that's uh, Debian based. Honestly, if you're going to use Open Media Vault, I recommend just using the friendly elect version unless... Uh, you don't trust it, or you'd rather use the Armbian version. Totally up to you. That's the great thing about these. Uh, you can flash whatever you want on it. But uh, you're going to just want to download whatever uh, image you want. And back in here, so there are, I have two guides, one for Ubuntu, one for Windows, on how to prepare the micro SD card. So once you have the image, like if you go to the Ubuntu one, uh, basically, it goes through identifying the uh, micro SD card and then wiping it and then flashing the image. So, you'll specifically want to use XZ for Armbian because it's image.xz. If you're doing something like the official images, it's going to be image.gz and you'll use gzip. This basically unzips it and then transfers it onto your card. So make sure you update SDX to like SDA if, it's, if that's where it's at. Just be super careful with any of these uh, commands because this, you could overwrite, like if you have, uh, let's say like a backup drive, like a USB drive or something uh, that's on SDA and you accidentally do SDA, you're gonna probably mess up uh, that drive. So uh, be very cautious when you go through these. Uh, a lot of times, like if you have drives you can disconnect or unmount, you can do that just to be extra sure. But there is a guide for preparing the micro SD card. So this guide is not going to go over that, but it's going to pick up where that leaves off. So basically, you'll be inserting the micro SD card into your CM3588 and powering it on. And actually, I need to power mine on real quick. 
Uh, and then there's two ways you can do this. I always just SSH into Armbian or like Debian or Ubuntu uh, because I find it easier. If you're just plugging in a keyboard and monitor, the steps are basically the same, but a little bit different. Same, same, but different. Uh, so if you do decide to connect to monitor, just keep in mind there are three HDMI ports. One is an input. So if you plug your monitor into the input, you're going to get a blank screen. And then two are outputs. So that's what you, where you want to plug your monitor into. If you're unsure which port to use, just use the middle port. That's always going to be an output. Uh, and it should work. So like I said, I typically SSH into the system. I find it easier to copy and paste commands. But technically, you could open up a browser and open up the guide and copy and paste you know directly from in the desktop environment but that's just not how i do it do it however it works best for you so if you are going to ssh in you need to find the ip address i just usually go to my router and find uh, the entry for it it'll be cm3588-nas but if you can hook up a monitor or like i have a monitor where i have a couple different inputs for my monitor i just Sometimes I'll hook up just an HDMI cable so I can see what's going on on the system. And it'll actually print the IP address uh, so you can get it from uh, that way as well. Okay, so if you want to SSH into it, you can either just use your terminal if you're in Ubuntu or if like, you have something like Windows. Uh, Termius is an awesome uh, SSH client. I'm not sponsored by them, but I do get a lot of comments asking what SSH client I'm using. It's Termius. There is a free version. It's amazing. Even if you're using Ubuntu or Linux, I recommend uh, using Termius. Okay, so let me actually see if I have... Uh, I just need to actually SSH into mine, but I'm not sure what IP address it is because I am starting fresh myself. Just bringing up my uh, yeah my router here and okay it looks like it kept the same IP address so let's bring up Termius and this should be correct so this is the current IP address for my system and the password I'm gonna log in as root and the password is one two three four and then just hit connect here and hopefully it works. Okay, small hiccup there, but basically when you install the micro SD card and you go through the installation setup, you can't reuse the micro SD card unless you flash it again. So I just had to flash it again real quick, uh, but we should be able to connect with our root and one, two, three, four. So add is new. And this is what it looks like when you first log in. Now I'm going to position this kind of in the center here. And I'm going to be going through, in the background, I'll be going and just following my guide, which will be linked in the description of this video. Uh, but basically, uh, it's a pretty straightforward process. Uh, let me see. Actually, I think I might make this a little bit bigger. So the first thing you're going to have to do is create a password. So I'm just going to put in a password. It's going to be mad at me because my password is weak, but I'm going to continue anyways. And then you're going to choose a default command shell. I prefer bash, so I'm going to do one. And then it says provide your username. I always do hey hardware, just hit enter. And then we're going to put in a password, which is going to, again, yell at me. And then for your real name, I am not going to give them my real name. Just hey hardware again. And this is going to get your system set up. It's going to create your user account, home directory, and everything. Uh, let's just set uh, my language based on my location. It detected it correctly. Surprise, I'm in Phoenix. It's really warm already, and it's only March. Uh, okay, then we're going to do two, because I want uh, ENUSUTF8. That's going to generate the locales here. It says starting the desktop environment. If I have my monitor up, then I'm going to get the monitor. If, uh, or if I have my monitor up, it's going to actually give me the login screen, I believe, or it might actually log you in automatically. If you're using the Debian one for the CLI, you're just going to get uh, similar to what I, are you actually going to get a login prompt and you log in uh, with your user? 
And then for me, because I've SSH'd in, I'm just getting uh, the root command prompt. And from here, we can actually uh, begin the next step, which is really just update RMBN. So before, what this is a little bit different if you've been using like the friendly electric uh, images, where when you just insert the SD card, you boot it up and it automatically installs onto the EMMC. This is a little bit different. You have basically an operating system that pretty much functions as as is. Uh, and then you can do like updates to it. You can add the user, you can uh, you know, set the passwords, and then you're basically going to copy everything over to your EMMC and it's gonna preserve all the things that you've done. So I prefer to do apt update and apt upgrade dash Y before I copy everything over, uh, just so we have the latest everything. Uh, I don't remember why, but there was a specific reason why I started doing this before moving everything over uh, and then doing it like the first updates when it's actually installed on the EMMC. You can try it either way. It's not too difficult to just do the updates now. Okay, updates are installed. We can actually go through with the uh, armbian install process. So you'll just do armbian install. That'll bring up the install script. We're going to be doing boot from EMMC and system on EMMC. So just make sure OK is selected. And then this, of course, is going to erase your EMMC. Click yes to continue. Uh, ext4 is fine unless there's a specific reason why you want to use a different ver uh, file system. And then we will begin the installation process. So I'll come back once this is done. All right, we are back. All we need to do is power off the system, close out of that terminal. And you're gonna wanna make sure you remove the SD card as you will just boot right back in to the ARMB and SD card if you don't. So remove the SD card and plug, or, and then turn it back on. And then instead of using root, you're gonna to wanna to use your actual, actually I have a pre-configured setup here. Give it a second. Uh, usually they boot up pretty quickly, which is great, because I am impatient. Mm -hmm. There's a few things, uh, a lot of these, uh, let me just make that go away. A lot of the post installation steps you don't have to do them. It's really just personal preference. So for me, I turn off the suspend for Ubuntu. So we'll go through that. Uh, you can run ARMB and config. That gives you some options that you can configure specifically uh, for Ubuntu. It'll already have it installed, but you can do sudo apt install ARMB and config if you're in the Debian version. You can install some additional packages. Uh, and you can change the host name. So by default, it's going to be CM3588-NAS. And okay, so I'm going to actually, it gives my IP address and I don't feel like editing, blurring it out. So I've just cleared the screen here, but there's a nice little uh, like welcome screen here and you can see it gives the WAN address. So I've just cleared the screen so you can't see it. So let's just go through uh, just, you know, for those that want to, we can just go into the uh, the the GNOME uh, defaults and turn off auto suspend because I hate the auto suspend. In fact, it'll probably do it during this video if I don't update this. So you just set the timeout to zero and you set suspend to blank. Control X, Y, enter to save. And then we're just gonna do, uh, make sure those updates take place. And then we're gonna restart GNOME. And now the suspend shouldn't happen, which is fantastic. Uh, here's a, what the RMB and config looks like. There's some interesting things in here, I suppose. Um, do some network things, some system things, really, 
Uh, maybe if you need to update the system, it might be helpful to use it. Either way, uh, I never have found a reason to use it, but you never know. It's good to know it's there. Uh, we can install like IFTOP and Nmap. Those are usually pretty useful. Uh, one big thing I like to do is change the host name. So a lot of times I have multiple of these systems running and I'm also, I just like to have my own host name here, cm3588-nas. That, that's actually not a bad one, but if you want to change it, you can open up your host file and it's here two places. So I'm just going to, I usually call these comets, uh, just my own personal thing. It has nothing to do with anything, but that's just how I do it. Uh, so comet. And then you need to change the host name, which will just have one entry in it. Update that, control X, Y, enter to save when you're in nano. And if we do sudo reboot now, when we're back into the system, uh, then it'll have the updated host name. And honestly, that's really it. Uh, Armbian is pretty cool. It's worth taking a look at. I don't know if I'd recommend it over the friendly elect uh, images unless for some reason, you don't trust their specific images. They do, like, I, I haven't found anything that's too concerning. The main thing would be just that, like, the sources that they have in there are usually uh, located in China, and you can up the, update those pretty quickly. Uh, as part of the guide, I go over that. So it, it's really up to you what you want to use. I recommend testing a few out. Uh, I really need to check out the Open Media Vault for armbian to see if it's any good but that's it hopefully this video was helpful uh, i'd love to know if anybody gets this far in the video uh, leave a comment with you know how you're using the cm3588 because i'm i've got a bunch of them and i'm looking for different ways to use them obviously nas is the most common probably but if anybody else has some cool ideas definitely leave a comment i'm curious to know Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.